If you can see, I'm lighting a fire here and I'm trying to spread it. James, I need your help. After you do his, can you read your mind? He's my friend that messed it up. Yeah, well, you can always just ask for a touch up if you want. Hey, you're running off without chocolate. You guys need chocolate. Perfectly found. Oh my god, no, no, no. I'm not I can't. This is my guy. Three hundred release. She's recording us. Mommy. Eh. I'm girl counselors, you're my favorite. Okay. Good. Yeah, I consider yeah, you I more than a counselor. All right, come on. guys have fun your headphone if your headphones were on it would hurt your ears she be the one that knows it's just a motion picture that we just oh all right I'm just going to try to do this I watch your kids <laughs> Hey guys, we love, we love all the kids. They're great. They test us, but it's all good. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Yvonne Schutz, and I'll be your host today. I've had the pleasure of speaking to most of the 31 families that have joined us here today. And I'd like to just tell you a little bit about myself that I have been with the Kildonan organization for the past 25 years, assisting the administration. This will be my seventh year working with Camp Dunnebeck. We are excited to celebrate our 67th year this summer. I'm privileged to introduce to you uh, a panel of camp staff who would tell you a little bit more about themselves and about camp. So we will have Carl Oppenheimer. He's our senior camp director. Sean Andrews is our camp director and our online camp director. 
Uh, Kathleen Stewart is our Orton Gillingham Fellow of Record. Sherry Dwyer is our Director of Language Training. Jennifer Amato is our Director of Health Services. Gail Berger is our Business Office Manager, our dorm parent, and is also a Camp Office Assistant. Christopher Ross is the Waterfront Director. He's also the Woodshop and Mountain Shop Mountain Bike in Instructor. He's also a former camper and a parent of a camper. We have Dylan Stewart, a camp counselor, Alex Sanchez, our camp counselor, and Nate Bump, also our camp counselor. First, let's hear from our senior camp director, Carl Oppenheimer. Take it away, Carl. Thank you, Yvonne. <clears throat> Welcome everyone. I'm Carl Oppenheimer. I'm the senior director of Camp Dunnebeck. I've been involved with Kildonan and Dunnebeck for over 30 years, and I'm excited to be gearing up for our 67th season of fun and learning. Many kids who struggle in school have to give up their fun summer to go to summer school or alter their schedule to be at home during the day for tutoring. A great thing about Camp Dunnebeck is that kids can still have fun, have a fun summer filled with activities they love but also learn the skills they need, need to succeed in school. That's been the concept since 1955 when Diana King founded Dunabek. We tap into campers' strengths and build on their weaknesses with daily one-on-one -on -one Orton Gillingham tutoring and fun, adventurous activities that build their confidence and foster strong friendships, combining vital, deep learning with confidence building and fun. Our Orton Gillingham tutors are expertly trained uh, a fellow and certified level clinical supervisor of the Orton Gillingham Academy supervised practitioners throughout the summer. A staff of energetic counselors from the United States and overseas, including Israel, Turkey, Hungary, and the United Kingdom supervise our campers during the day and at night. They bring energy, intrigue, and most importantly, help to make sure every camper has a safe, fun experience at camp. Helping to make everything come together is camp director, Sean Andrews. He worked at Kildonan for five years as a tutor and helped develop the assistive technology program. He's beginning his ninth year at Dunabek and, his, and this is his fourth year as camp director. Thank you. Sean will take it from here. Hey, hi everyone. Thank you, Carl. Uh, my name is Sean Andrews, and as Carl mentioned, I'm the camp director at Camp Dunabek and creator of Dunabek 2.0, our online camp. Uh, this is my ninth year at Dunabek. Uh, worked at Kildonan for five. And at both Dunabek and Kildonan, I worked as a language tutor as well as the assistive technology coordinator. And through these experiences, I've learned that it requires, uh, that teaching requires remediating difference, deficiencies, uh, but also finding ways to personalize learning to support how a student learns best. Uh, over the years, I've immersed myself in dyslexic culture, uh, and it's been a pleasure to work with these amazing students and campers year after year. Uh, working here has inspired me to continue to focus on how we can leverage technologies to support students with dyslexia. I even published my master's, master's thesis on using digital resources to teach students with dyslexia. Um, currently, I work in Brooklyn at Bay Ridge Prep as the educational technologist for K through 12, where I continue to support our LD community through tutoring and resource training. Uh, at Dunabek, I provide quality, uh, providing quality language tutoring is paramount, but we also focus on encouraging and celebrating their strengths. And Dunabek is able to find this balance beautifully. It's evident when you can see the talent that comes out of activities such as music, art, filmmaking, woodworking, drama, sports, and watching the improvements that they make in tutoring is mind blowing. Uh, this is why I continue to come back year after year, uh, because this is how, uh, how we should approach teaching. Student-centered, uh, not just for academic skills, but also emotional intelligence and creative passion. Every student is different, but the natural creativity, the hands-on ability, and outside-the-box thinking of these kids is undeniable. Uh, Dunnebeck has been around for 67 years for a reason, and it continues to make a lifelong impact on its campers. I've seen many campers come ashamed of their dyslexia, and despite their hardships, it's truly inspirational to see uh, the community and support uh, and encourage each other to embrace and even celebrate their dyslexia as they should. 
I'm grateful for everything the campers and students have taught me because there's a magic that happens at Donnebeck and I'm privileged to be part of it. And I welcome you all to join the family. So now I'll turn it over to Kathleen Stewart, our fellow of record for camp. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Welcome everyone. On behalf of all the OG practitioners who are ready to work with your children, I, I really wanna thank you for coming. My name is Kathleen and I, as a fellow of record, I work to make sure that all the um, tutoring meets, fully meets the standards of the Orton Gillingham Academy. Uh, I really like what Sean said. I, I've worked at Kildonan since 2005, but Dunnebeck is still somewhat new to me. This will be my uh, fourth summer. Um, and there is a magic to it. Uh, what I've come to learn is that summer is a really powerful time to work on reading and writing uh, because I guess, because there's no social studies homework, you know, there's no history project. And so you can work, dive deep into that reading and writing, but then just have so much fun to offset it that you can really make some good gains that the interplay between play and Finding those passions that Sean talked about is, is just really productive. Um, anyway, on, on the academic side, you're probably aware what happens every day is that your child has a full hour with a uh, Orton Gillingham practitioner uh, five days a week. Um, and the really important takeaway for you today about Orton Gillingham is that there's no textbook. There's no set order of things that your child's gonna learn when they enter. Um, instead, we leave that to the diagnostic prescriptive sets of the practitioners that we train and vet. So they're going to see what your kid knows, what they don't know, and start filling in the gaps. We don't waste time teaching a lot of things they already know. So that means that we can get to a place where we're really working with splintered skill sets, where we're working on the basics that need to be shored up, but we're also working hard on organization of paragraphs or Latin word parts. So it's, um, it's, Wharton Gillingham is nothing if not flexible and it's broad and deep. Um, personality counts for a lot too. And so Sherry works so hard and we all work hard to make the right tutor matches. Uh, we have many um, OG tutors who come back year after year to really enjoy the professional learning community, um, but also just the, to experience the gratification of watching the growth, the kids growth over the summer. So anyway, let me turn this over to Sherry Dwyer, my colleague of many, many years, who serves as Director of Language Training. Go ahead, Sherry. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, this is my seventh year with Camp Dunnebeck, and um, I also worked 20 years at the Kildonan School. Um, first, I worked there as a teacher and tutor, and then I became the testing coordinator and a clinical supervisor, and I helped with the training and um, mentoring of other tutors. Um, but I'm also the proud parent of a Kildonan graduate. So I know firsthand the struggle that both parents and students have on the road to acquiring a, a, a appropriate education. I know how debilitating it is um, for students to keep struggling when they're trying their best and they want to learn and that they find that they're lagging behind their peers. And no matter how hard they try, they're, they're just not getting it. Um, so when I found Kildonan and brought my son to the Kildonan school. I felt like we had found the light at the end of a long, dark tunnel um, because the school provided a safe and positive environment for students to learn and taught them in a way that they were able to acquire new skills and build their confidence. So, um, and Dunnebeck is, is the same thing, but what, what amazed me is that because it's in the summertime and as Kathleen was saying, it's a concentrated academic deep dive into their language skills, free from the distractions, as she said, of, of social studies and, and the other things that go along with the school year. So I was amazed at how much progress the campers are able to make in such a short amount of time. You know, the combination of the stress-free environment and all the great physical activities create healthy minds and healthy bodies and just open the window um, for learning. The, the students in that tutoring, that one-to-one -one setting is the key to, to alleviating the stress because they're free from the distraction of their peers. They're free from that debilitating fear of failure because their, their relationship with their tutor, you know, the, the tutor is there to help them discover ways to learn and to get through these roadblocks. 
at the very beginning of camp, we administer a whole battery of standardized tests to help to, you know, to help pinpoint exactly where that student is in their education. And then we do criterion reference testing to really fine tune where that child's skills are. And that's what the tutor uses to, to make a, a unique lesson plan that's devised just for that student. So that they're, as Kathleen said, working on what they need, not just some standard cookbook, okay, we're gonna start with silent E, we're going to do, you know, vowel teams. We're only going to teach that child what, what they need and we will keep reviewing their skills to bring them along. But it's the, the key to the success is that it's diagnostic and prescriptive. And it's so healthy for the student to see that they can actually be successful and they're learning on things, they're studying things that are relevant. Um, as the director of language training, I oversee the student tutor matchups um, because every, every child is unique and different and every tutor has different, brings something, has a different background and, and has different skills. Um, besides being OG, we all have, I, I'm a musician, so I might, you know, gravitate toward a student who has an inclination toward music. Um, some of our students, um, tutors, we had a professional ice skater and, um, you know, everyone has a different background so that the, the matchup is, is key to, to building trust. Um, at the end of camp, we also readminister criterion reference testing, not the standardized testing to help see their growth and to help, you know, what do they need to continue work on? Where have they made gains? Um, I'm thankful to Diana King for her vision in starting the camp and um, furthering the cause of providing an education for dyslexic students. And I'm really proud to be part of the program because it's just a gratifying experience to see the growth and the gains that the students make, not just academically, but in their self-confidence and in their, their, their feelings of, of self-worth. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this summer. I'm looking forward to, to seeing you all in person. Um, and uh, I think I will turn this over now to Jen Amato so she can tell you about our health program. Jen? Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Amato and I'm the health director for Camp Dunnebeck. Uh, this will be my seventh summer as health director. Prior to that, I was the Kildonan school nurse for five years. And now I'm employed as a staff nurse at Morgawood during the school year. Um, health and safety is our number one priority at camp. The health center maintains 24 seven nursing staff, as well as CPR, AED and first aid trained support staff. To ensure your campus enjoyment and success, it is important that you inform us of any allergy, health, diet, personal habits, and or behavioral issues as soon as possible. All disclosures are kept in professional confidence. Such information is crucial to enable my staff to assign, train, and supervise our counselors to best serve the needs of your camper. Many are, of our returning counselors are well-versed in these areas. All campers are required to have a valid physical exam and proof of immunization. If your camper has regimented medication, please contact me at your earliest convenience so I may go over successfully administering them. I know that many parents have a lot of questions regarding our COVID protocol, and I can assure you that it will be safely and successfully implemented in the same manner that Marvelwood has conducted their COVID protocol for the school year, which I'll happily go over during the question and answer portion of the open house. As I said, this will be my seventh year with Dunnebeck, and a lot of people ask me why I keep coming back. I truly enjoy working at Dunnebeck, and I take time out of my summer every year to come back and see these initially tentative faces, and they leave with the confidence and tools to help guide them for their next school year. That is such a rewarding feeling knowing that my nursing staff helped make that possible by keeping the campers healthy and safe. So now I'd like to turn this over to Gail Berger, our camp office manager. Thanks, Jen. Hi, everyone. My name is Gail Berger, and I've worked in the business office at Kildonan for the last 11 years. I've also had the pleasure of being the girls dorm head at Camp Dunnebeck for the last seven. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new faces. Uh, I hope I see each and every one of you at camp and um, 
Looking forward to another fun summer here at Dunabax. Now I'm going to turn it over to Chris Ross, our waterfront director. Chris, you're muted. Hit your space bar. Why don't we go ahead and jump to Dylan and then we'll come back to Chris. Sure, I'm Dylan. Uh, I was one of the counselors last summer. I also um, helped run the sports activities uh, through the day. Um, one example of like a weekend activity that we did um, was whitewater rafting up in uh, Cornwall, Connecticut. Um, I had a lot of fun with that one. There was certainly like a little bit of friendly competition between campers to see who could paddle down the river fastest, but um, they showed a lot of great teamwork as well. And um, a lot of fun activities, like including um, some hiking. I really liked Legos in the dorm. Um, and uh, we went on a rollerblading trip once, which I really enjoyed. Um, an example of uh, some just like a routine in the dorm that um, I was particularly fond of was like reading to campers before bed. It was a good way to like calm them down before going to sleep. And it was also a pleasure to see their enthusiasm for learning as well. So, yeah, I'll turn it over to Alex now. All right. Uh, my name is Alex Sanchez. I was one of the other boys counselors last summer and uh, this upcoming summer. I also... Uh, helped out in a couple activities, but mainly I ran the drama program. Um, you know, we made our own show. It's pretty fun. Um, but no, a lot of the things that I love about Dunnebeck are just how much fun we get to have with giving these kids such a personalized experience. Um, it really makes, you know, being a part of the camp uh, fantastic. It helps the kids with, you know, their lives and it helps us, you know, feel good about ours at the same time. So it's a nice little thing that we get to do. Um, so I'll turn this over to Nate. And actually, why don't we jump back to Chris, because I see Chris has got his mute off, and then we'll head right to Nate after Chris. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Great. Uh, sorry, my, my computer froze. Um, so I'm Christopher Ross, and yes, I I'm in charge of the mountain bike, mountain biking, the wood shop, the waterfront activities. And um, I'm actually, I was a camper in the 80s at Dunabac. And um, actually I, my whole family is a dyslexic family. So we have a lot of, a lot of my family is, um, has gone to, uh, to Kildonan or done, gone to Dunabac. I have two children um, and they both went. Back. And so if any of the parents have questions about you know, uh, um, I, I have firsthand experience of being a parent with dyslexic like kids. Um, but I'm really looking, you know, this is the Kent, uh, the Kent location and the Marblewood location. We, we did it for the first summer last summer. And we, it was great. It's a great location. We have, we have a, a state park next really close that we actually can, we can mountain bike from the school to the state park. There's other preserves and um, that we are we're able to mountain bike on, and um, and I'm really looking forward to this summer again expanding. I made a, a wood shop last summer at the Marblewood School, and and I'm really looking forward to expanding that, that facility. Um, um, I have my two assistants here, as you can see. This <laughs> these dogs hopefully will be able to be with us this summer, but I'm really looking forward to. To, it's so great to see all the the the, the campers from last summer, and, and I'm looking forward to meeting these new campers. So, um, it's a good summer. Thank you. And I and I'm gonna I guess the next one would be Nate. Uh, Nate. Nate. Well, I'll introduce Nate. Nate was a counselor last summer with me, and um, look forward to hearing hearing from you, Nate. Well, hi guys. I'm Nate, and as Chris said, I was a counselor at uh, Camp Dunnebach last year. On top of that, I, I've also been a camper at Camp Dunnebach, and I'm a former Chilldonan grad. Um, at camp, I helped run the music programs and worked in dorm life. And my favorite part about camp is when you get a few weeks in and the kids start breaking down their shells and 
surely becoming themselves and making friends at camp and the bonds that kids make at Camp Dunnenbach, that's my favorite part of working there. So, and I will turn this back over to Yvonne now, I believe. Yes, thank you, Nate. Okay, uh, now we're going to take you on a virtual tour of our camp uh, at Marvelwood School. Okay, take it away. Or here on the beautiful campus of the Marvelwood School. My name is Yvonne Schutz, and I'm going to take you there. Come on. come down here to have their attendance taken before they begin their day. This is the front entrance into the schoolhouse. There's a east and a west side to the schoolhouse. We will go into the east end right this way. Going into the library which Camp Dunabek will use as their multi-purpose room. Plenty of time to sit around, relax, and read a good book. Beyond the stage here, in the multi-purpose room. It's a beautiful vista and a lovely seating and picnic area. This room will go down this corridor to some classrooms and the tutoring wing. Our tutoring wing down this way. Nice place to sit and wait for your tutor. Or here, or here. Here's one of the tutoring hallways into multiple tutoring rooms. Now we'll go up to the west wing of the schoolhouse. This is where the Camp directors have their office right off of the patio. Here is the camp director's office. The director's office overlooks the schoolhouse patio. I'm here with one of my friends in our science and to the Athletic Center. Here we are 
at the athletic center. Let's go into the gym. Basketball, anyone? Welcome to Lake Dorm, right this way. Here is a convenience area for the dorms. Here we are in the dining hall. Chef Paul of Sage Dining Services will be providing meals for us this summer. Okay, um, I'd like to turn it back over to our camp director, Carl Oppenheimer, who will introduce um, our camper families and some former camp camper guests, after which we will invite you to participate in a question and answer session. Carl? Thank you, Yvonne. You're welcome. So the most important uh, components of camp are kids and parents, and we have some here to talk a little about their experience. Our first camper is Julia, who came to camp last year and has joined us with her mom, Melissa. Hi, Julia. Hi. Julia, what was your favorite thing about camp? Um, all, all the new friends I made, probably. And uh, my mom didn't want me to go horse. My mom never let me go horseback riding, so I wanted to go horseback riding. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Um, Melissa, um, can you tell us your perspective of camp as a parent? Oh, yes. My perspective was I sent my daughter away for six weeks and I got back a new child. <laughs> um, I, we were uh, struggling to find something for Julia that would help her progress academically, um, especially after a year of COVID where learning and resources in her school were, you know, challenged. So we knew that it was going to be a big year for her and we wanted to make sure that we were doing everything that we could to give her the wind in her sails. And I think you guys put a great, together a great you know, intro of everything that Camp Dunnebeck uh, offers. And it's funny because I didn't listen to this last year before I signed Julie up. Um, so it's, it's great to hear it. Um, but some of the things that you guys talked about, um, you know, sound like little blurbs in little in different categories, but from like a parent's perspective, you see the data behind the academics um, and the tutoring, and that's very quantifiable. And it's, you can see it in her school and her teachers can tell the difference. And then you see everything else that happens. And to me, I dropped off a child uh, for a period and she was very, you know, calm, quiet, collected. And when I picked her up, she was confident and exuding such um, such like personality that she actually brought it with her to school in September. And the teachers said to me, this is like the teachers not because obviously teachers change over, but her, her resource room teachers and her tutors in school, they're like, she's a different kid. She's advocating for herself. She's in, a, in I think it's being in a community. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to go on because there's a lot that I have to say, but I think it's being in a community of kids that are also very much like her that and demystifying the word dyslexia to her and um, in an environment where she feels like it's actually an attribute 
not a detriment. And um, I could see her using that to advocate for herself this year, um, as well as, you know, being fine talking about it in school. And I think those are some really intangibles that you don't think about um, when you're signing your kid up for camp. So um, that to me, from a parent's perspective, is like, you know, mind blowing that we get not just the academics, the confidence for her to have the best time of her life and, you know, for her to think of you guys as her family and not me. So I, I don't take offense to it, but um, I'm appreciative of it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. Uh, Eleanor has attended camp for the last three years, including our year of virtual camp. She's here with her mother, Elizabeth. Hi, Eleanor. Hello. Can you tell us about your favorite camp experiences? Probably woodworking or horseback riding. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Everything was great. <laughs> uh, thank you, Eleanor. Uh, Elizabeth, what has it been like for you as a parent to have Eleanor at camp? Uh, it's been a really good experience for me as a parent, um, for like academically, it's the summer, Eleanor has anxiety about like, you know, performing and writing and reading. Um, in the summer has just been, it's a really good place for her to practice skills with low pressure. And there is no grade, there is nothing writing on it. It's just, hey, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna write some paragraphs or we're gonna do some stuff. And so that's been very good at reducing her anxiety later when she goes back to school because she's had a lot of practice building her skills, getting comfortable with it and being confident to go back you know, for the rest of the school year when she goes back in the fall. And then I think, you know, personally for her, being at Camp Dunnebeck with her community of people, like she, that's her favorite part is just being with her, you know, fellow dyslexics and being able to be proud of who she is. And yeah, it's not, she's the only, she, she's not in the minority, you know, she's there, she's in the majority and, you know, it's a great way to see her strengths and everyone's strengths and just feel good about being dyslexic and then also carrying that back to school. And yeah, being able to advocate and say, I know this is what I need to be successful. And I'm not you know, shy about speaking up and saying, I know myself well enough that I know I need this, this, and this. And you know, that's been also very good. Just she feels she's with her people and you know, she doesn't usually, she doesn't get that during the school year, but that's her, I want to go be with my people, you know, for the summer. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Dylan also came to camp last year and is here with his mother, Sanaya. Hi, Dylan. Say hello. 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 What was your favorite part of camp, Dylan? Well, my favorite part of camp was making friends, and my favorite activity was um, sports, mountain biking, and that's it. And tutoring. Ooh, okay. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, Sanaya, can you share your perspective of how camp affected Dylan? Um, camp was an awesome place for Dylan. Um, prior to Dylan come, um, attending Camp Dunnebeck, uh, Dylan was not reading or doing any type of uh, literacy in school, which was a challenge. Um, he's in third, he was in second grade at the time. Um, and so sending him to Camp Dunnebeck was really life-changing for him in that it actually gave him the confidence that uh, when he went back to school in September, he could read. Um, he would often say in class, oh, I can't read that. I can't read that. Um, but coming from Camp um, Dunnebeck, he had the confidence to now go in class with his, his peers and be able to um, engage in, in reading and literacy uh, and really begin to read on his own. He, you know, we 
in our home books is something that we have a lot of and we, we enjoy them. And so the, the fact that he can now do that on his own without someone having to read to him um, has shown a lot of confidence. Um, I love Camp Dunnebeck. I have been blessed to um, be introduced to Camp Dunnebeck. I have a 34 year old son who the founder of Camp Dunnebeck taught him to read at 17 and he went on to do great things. And so that was my first introduction to Camp Dunnebeck. Um, and to now have my last son um, of my six sons uh, be able to come there and be blessed with an experience to help him gain confidence in literacy has been a blessing for us. And I've seen so much growth. I'm, I'm even blessed to have a tutor from Kim Dunnebeck, who works with my son weekly here in the city. Um, and he is excited to see her. She has really built his confidence in learning. And it, it takes a lot of the pressure off um, of him, you know, having to perform in a classroom. He attends a public school, so it's very traditional. So, you know, Camp Dunnebeck gives him this non-traditional way of looking at language and work. And so I'm just grateful that we have been a part of the experience and I'm really grateful for Carl and Gail. Um, they taught my oldest son and we have just been blessed by Cam Dunnebeck. Thank you so much, Sanaya. And thank you for sharing about Robert. I, I hadn't told you I had intended to ask, but I intended to ask about him as well. Um, but thank you for, for just sharing anyway. Um, Haley and Alma attended as older campers. Um, so let's start with Haley. Good morning, Haley. Hi, good morning. Um, Haley, what do you remember most about camp? Um, probably my favorite thing was being able to make all the connections that I did. Uh, I started camp when I was around 14, 14 or 15, and I'm 18 now, and I still have a bunch of friends from there that I still talk to, we still talk to regularly. It's been, it was really nice being able to make new connections. Um, probably one of my favorite trips or things that I did was uh, this senior trip. It was a uh, whitewater rafting. That was awesome. We got to camp, it was a campfire, it was really fun, really nice. And I definitely, I love I loved Hill Downer and I love Camp Dunnebeck and it was a really fun experience for me. Thank you, Haley. Alma, how about you? What was camp like for you? Alma unfortunately couldn't make it. She's oh. doing college work right now, but I know speaking on her behalf because we met at camp when we were very, very young. Uh, she had a great experience. She had a good time. We did almost everything together and we're still friends to this day, so. Thanks so much. Um, so what, what I'm hearing is a lot of lifelong learning and even some lifelong friendships. Uh, so thank you everyone who shared all, all that. Uh, and so now we're gonna open, it, open the room up for questions. Uh, Yvonne. Okay, so um, you can either raise your hand on the screen or there's in the, in the right hand corner, there's a spot for you to raise your hand. And I see um, Milana, is, did I say your name correctly? You need to unmute your mic. Um, what's your question? Hi, thanks everybody. Um, and it's really helpful to see the perspectives. Um, I have uh, Alec, he's 11, he'll be 12. Uh, he didn't wanna be on camera. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask a few questions from a camper perspective that he wanted me to ask. And then I have some parent questions, if that's okay. Go right ahead. Okay, so uh, one question Alec had was, what's the breakdown of tutoring versus fun activities? Um, I, can, I can take that uh, if you'd like. Okay. Um, so uh, 
we have uh, so there's one hour per day uh, that's dedicated to tutoring. Uh, we've got uh, six periods throughout the day. Uh, we also have a, a study hall period where they can independently work on what was assigned in tutoring. Uh, but other than that, we have a big selection of different activities that they can pick. Um, and so, you know, uh, intermingled in there uh, to make sure that, you know, they're having fun, they're working on those skill sets that that was um, you know, that they're really interested in, that really get them excited. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, we have, um, we will have in the afternoon, usually swimming, um, and we'll, we'll do evening activity as well. So, um, and then usually at, at towards nighttime too, we do have uh, most nights, some independent reading, uh, especially before you go to bed. I know Dylan was talking about some of the younger kids, uh, the counselor would read to. So we do try to intermingle um, the, the tutoring and, and the, the reading uh, throughout the day, um, you know, with the reinforcement and study hall, but really the the uh, the one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring as well. Okay, thank you for that. Um, just a few more questions from Alec. One was, what's the breakdown of kids and their ages that you would expect to come this year and also boys versus girls? So um, we usually have more boys than girls. Um, and we group um, the, the uh, campers in three groups. So we have our beginner group, which is uh, 8, 9, and 10, our middle group, which is 11, 12, and 13, and our senior group, which is 14, 15, and 16. And how many kids do you expect this summer overall? So last summer we had, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, forgot that last part. So last summer we had 42 campers and um, we may have somewhere around there, but maybe up to 60. It, it really just depends on the year. Um, we're a small camp and we like to keep it that way. So it's, um, we probably will not go over 60 or we might not even reach 60. So it's a small camp. Thank you. All right, and just one more a question, but this one is from for, for me, <laughs> for a parent perspective. So um, how, in addition to just the standardized testing that you mentioned um, at the beginning, how do you prepare for the entry of campers so that you can hit the ground running? Do you um, reach out to their current um, OG or, you know, Wilson method tutors and OT or any other um, uh, professionals that they're working with to, to learn where they are? So um, I'm going to answer that in part and then I'm going to turn it over to Sherry Dwyer to elaborate. So as you know, part of the uh, application procedure is to submit a neuropsychological testing and any other testing that you would like to share. Um, from his present teachers, um, we would definitely review that. Um, and then I'm just gonna segue over to Sherry so she can elaborate on how we use that in conjunction with our testing to formulate a plan. The, uh, the tutors start camp a, a good week before the campers come and they are reviewing those psych evals and those test scores uh, and then our, crutch, our own standardized testing occurs the very first day of camp. So they, they put that all together and yes, they most certainly will um, go over whatever reports that you have provided and shared with us. Um, and that is part of the preparation before they even see the camper is to go over all of those um, testing and reports. And, and that is part of being an OG practitioner and that's what makes our program unique is that that's what we don't follow a textbook. We follow what that student needs by looking carefully at the testing and the reports. And, and uh, just to piggyback off of that, uh, speaking as, um, you know, a, a tutor myself to um, I've oftentimes if there is uh, important things that another tutor that they're working with. Um, that I'm always happy to, you know, uh, to, to email back and forth and see where they've left off and then vice versa, you know, once we're done, um, really kind of showing them where we left off so that they can take it from there and, and really not spend a lot of time reviewing things that have already been done and, and really working on those gains. And if I could just quickly add on to that, um, 
myself, I was tutored by Sean during my years at Kildonan. Um, and they, they do really make it real personalized and they focus on things that you really need to work on for that summer because there are strengths that you already have and they really do a good job on helping you improve on your weaknesses. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Nate. Um, and I think I saw Lindsay and Sage had your hand up. Did you have a question? Oh, yes. Hi, how are you? Hi. This is Sage. Um, how did... Well, I guess we were wondering, one of the questions was whether, I think you answered it with the co-ed, most of the co camp is completely co-ed for all activities. And it's just yeah. the dorm rooms that are separated for residential. Yeah. And the other question I have is, do you focus on reading comprehension and organizational skills? if you have a child who struggles with organizational skills? I'll take that one. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> that is absolutely part of our, of our, what we cover. And um, part of an OG lesson, right. I mean, we break the language down into its components and we start with the simple, but we go to the complex and um, executive functioning, making outlines, uh, breaking things down and making steps, um, even like even writing self-editing skills and and making a checklist to make sure that what you've written is correct. Um, before you read something, steps that you would take to help you understand um, before you even read something. So reading comprehension, that that's a whole, you know, our tutors are trained in in all of those things. And and again, our, our students come with different skill sets and, and some students can read fluently and, and have no idea what they're reading. So that tutor isn't gonna be teaching them how to read fluently. That tutor is gonna be working, focusing on those comprehension skills. And um, our study halls, you know, to work on those executive functioning, I wonder if I can pull one up here. We send, um, here, I've got a visual aid. <laughs> we send our campers with these eight pocket folders and to help them learn organizational skills in the study hall, each pocket has an assignment in that they complete and that helps them go step by step um, and, and, and to keep their materials organized and to follow a checklist and did I get everything done? So- um, Is there an adult supervising study hall? Oh, uh, 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 an OG tutor um, supervises the study hall and the study halls are divided into ages. Um, you know, there's several different study halls so that your student is in a, again, it's a quiet environment with, with other students of their age working independently on their work. But if they have an issue or they don't understand something or they need to be redirected um, back to their work if they're having a hard time staying focused. That's what that proctor is there for. And the proctors, because they're a, a tutor, they know what to look for. And they, you know, if, so if you know, so if the student doesn't remember the directions, the student, the the tutor can help them understand the assignment if they have forgotten um, the concept or what they need to do. So mm -hmm. yes, it's a, it's a proctored study hall. And again, it's it's one of the successes of our program is, is it's the constant reviewing and refreshing of information. So they'll, they'll meet with their tutor and then later in the day they have the study hall and then later at night they have the reading period. And then the next day when they meet the tutor, the tutor goes through all the work to see what did they have difficulty with? What were they successful on? And then we'll, we'll plant, we'll focus on those things accordingly. So um, at every week your tutor writes a, a, um, a progress report. Uh, they will email you and tell you what their, you know, how your student did that week. Um, I drop in and observe lessons to see how things are going. Um, they, I, I review the lesson plans to make sure that your student is getting an appropriate, um, that they're getting what they need based on your student's profile. Uh, so yes, they're very, um, very closely, the program is very closely monitored between Kathleen and myself, um, proctoring, 
um, the study halls, um, overseeing the tutoring, observing every uh, tutor gets observed with every student. Um, it's a very tight operation. And then is One there thing, any... Oh, sorry. sorry, I was just gonna add to what Sherry said, mm -hmm. that the, the residential people, it's uh, all a mix. Like, you know, I've spent a couple of Saturdays in the dorm and the, the residential and the councils are helping them. Like, when should you wash your hair if breakfast is at this hour for this trip? Mm -hmm. So I think that all that experience of being able to function as part of the community and be on time is also strengthening in, in um, the, the executive functioning realm as well. So, and do they participate in any community service, like helping clean up the campus? Do they make their beds in the morning? Is there? Yeah, you, you want to take um, that I, one? Yeah, I can take that one. In the dorm, um, you know, they have to, the rooms have to be cleaned every day. Um, it, they have to be picked up because it's just part of it. The, the, um, we have a common area that usually has to be picked up just because there's so many people living in it and it's, it teaches them good responsibility. And, um, so in the dorms, yes, they have to make their beds. They have certain times where, you know, some of them will go through because there's limited number of showers and stuff. So we'll go through and say, okay. Who likes to take a shower in the morning? Who likes to take it in the afternoon? And we'll have a schedule. And obviously, if they need to take it, <clears throat> they can take it when they need it. But um, yes, we do have it organized in the dorms so that they are having to take care of themselves with a little responsibility. But we're also having a lot of fun. And what time do they have bed at night? Do they? It depends on the age. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, a, it's hard for some of the kids in the beginning to go to sleep at night. My biggest rule in the dorm is if you can stay quiet in your bed, obviously feel free to read before you go to bed. Uh, that one is, you can always get away with that one because I think it's so important and it's a good skill for the kids to learn just to be able to read, relax, and then fall asleep. So we do have different times depending on the age group. Um, I think last year it was for the juniors, wasn't it 8.30, 9 o'clock? I'd have to look. Um, mm -hmm. So, and yeah, then the, it, the general, if I may, uh, the general time frame be 8.30 for the youngest, 9 o'clock-ish for the middle group and uh, 9.30. Uh, uh, for the older group. Okay, and you have a no electronics policy? Correct. Great. Okay, we're gonna hear from um, Julia Rubin's mom. Um, I'm not sure if this is Siobhan or Rochelle. Could you- uh, this is Ro Yeah, this is Rochelle. Um, both Hi, Rochelle. Julia and Siobhan. Both Julia and Siobhan have opted not to be on camera. Um, <laughs> apparently I'm the best dressed out of all of us. <laughs> So I have like a broad range of questions, like they just, they're, but they're pretty, uh, dis, you know, very uh, discreet. So the first is uh, kind of building off the question about executive functioning and, and all that. Um, for, for children, you know, sometimes, at least in our experience, is that not everybody learns best in the same environment, right? Some kids perhaps need a quiet study hall. Some kids might you know, need music in their ears to focus. Uh, same thing for testing. Uh, so my question is two part. One, do you all like spend time trying to figure out at all what might be the most optimal situation for the particular kid? Because like, we don't know the answer to that yet, right? Like, we don't know, should she wear the headphones? Should she not wear, I mean, we've tried it at school, but you know, there's no control group. <laughs> so um, we're just wondering if you all um, spend any time evaluating that and um, you know, uh, making accommodations, I guess, on the study hall piece of it in terms of the sound. I'll take that. that. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We, um, we do have a variety of different kinds of rooms that we use. And um, for someone who needs the quiet space, uh, they will be in a room with just a only a few other, like two or three other students mm -hmm. uh, separated. Um, and we have in the past had students who have um, headphones on, but again, we are technology. Uh, we don't, we don't have, um, 
they're not allowed to have their cell phones in there because that ends up being a distraction. And um, uh, it's a quiet campus. It's up in the, you know, it's in the woods. Um, So there's not a lot of background noise, distraction kind of uh, things that the quiet hall, the study hall rooms are, it's a big schoolhouse. um, Mm -hmm. And the, you saw the long corridors. So, so they are in a place that's free from distraction, but we do um, accommodate students needs and we are sensitive. Our students are all individuals um, and the idea is for them to be successful. And we try to make the environment as, as free from distractions, noises outside the window, um, you know, other activities. But there's also, you know, some kids learn better by verbalizing and they need to be able to um, say what they're doing. And so we would not want to have that child sitting next to someone who needs to have it quiet. So we are all right. you know, very much aware of those kinds of needs. Thank you. Um, so uh, just to break in with. The, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, there was another thing about the executive functioning that I just find so um, wonder- wonderful about Dunnebeck. Every student has a backpack that they carry their water bottle and their their gear because they go to all these different activities and they need a riding, they keep their riding gear in one place and and they have their schedule, which is pretty complicated. Okay, now I'm going mountain biking and and now I need to be hydrated. And, and so they, by the end of the camp, they are, masters <laughs> at, at keeping track of things. And if they have the counselors are that, oh, Dylan, you forgot your backpack, you know, and it's all, they learn, they learn by doing and they do a lot. That's awesome. Uh, basic question, the lake house dorm, the child who won't appear on camera, she's just wondering, is that for boys or girls? Well, it changes uh, from year to year, traditionally, um, I mean, traditionally, it's, we've, all, we've only got one year on this campus, uh, but so if we go by our one year history, Lake was a boys dorm last year, Summit was a boys uh, girls dorm uh, last year. Um, that may stay the same. Uh, I, I, I think we're going to be using more buildings this year as well. So uh, what it may come down to is different buildings have different capacity levels. And so Mm -hmm. if I need to put more people in one building that had been, um, you know, a different gender, then, you know, I may have to make a change there. But uh, I will say, like, it's likely that at Summit, at least will remain the girls, uh, a girls dorm. Mm -hmm. Uh, It it just seems set up more conducive to to girls. but I can't, that's not written in stone. <laughs> okay, that was, um, in terms of the 42 to 60 um, campers, is that day and resident? And um, if it's both day and resident, about how many resident campers are there during a summer? The majority are resident. Um, for instance, last year of our 42, uh, about, Yvonne will correct me if I'm wrong here, but about 10 or so were day students. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say the ratio would be similar, um, just if I were to predict. Uh, so maybe if we have 60, maybe 15 to 20 would be day mm-hmm. students, the rest would board. I, I see the trend uh, towards more residential this year, um, and that might be due to COVID, um, but there's more um, boarding campers applying than day presently. In- in terms of reading um, and like reading during like study hall or whenever one does reading, does the camp offer books like sort of the just right books? Um, do campers bring their own books? Like how does that generally work? And <laughs> both. <you. laughs> okay. The answer is both. Um, we provide um, a lot, of all different kinds of, from beginning readers to high interest Um, young adult novels. Uh, We have our own collection of books, but a lot of campers bring books from home, especially to read in the dorm at night. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of, you know, students are already invested in a particular series. um, And so they, that they're enjoying. And we will, we order, you know, 
we purchase books when I find a student that, that, you know, matching a book with a student is like buying clothes, you know, like not one size does not fit all. And you want that child loving what they're reading. So we, we are con continually purchasing new books to add to our collection. And, um, and yes, we have a variety of literature. And if I may add, it's a little bit um, sentimental, but <laughs> sometimes Dunnebeck is the is a time where a kid might read from start to finish his, his first whole book. Um, I know for me as a student at Kildonan, uh, that was the case. I, I had never completed a whole book until I went to Kildonan. Um, so as a a student or a camper, that's an incredibly sort of valuable experience. I still remember that moment uh, now. And, and so I, and I think uh, a lot of our campers and, and students can still point to the, you know, when they first read that book and what book it was. So I, I just want to it put some emphasis on how important it is to choose the right book. Um, uh, Elizabeth? Uh, I think well, we had two, two more ahead. very quick questions. Oh. Pretty much like a yes, no. Do the kids leave with like a plan, whether it's scores or some kind of written plan to provide to their schools when they return that can assist with knowing where the kids are? Uh, do they leave Dunnebeck with that? I'll take yes. that one. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The you have two reports where you have all kinds of reports from all the residential life and activities. You have an, a language training report, which tells exactly what skills were covered. Um, and it's very specific, you know, what, what Latin roots, what spelling patterns, what handwriting skills, if they did keyboarding, you know, paragraph writing, you know, it's all in that report. And you also have a testing report, which has the standardized testing, which is which tells you grade levels and percentiles, and you have the criterion reference testing, which tells you um, how they improved on whatever skills they were focused on, whether it's you know their their oral reading fluency. There's uh, every week your tutor assesses their oral reading fluency, um, their decoding abilities, their phonemic awareness. You get a, a complete report um, that documents all of that. So most important question, during drop-off, do we get to see the dorm? That's yeah. going to depend on um, the, you know, the COVID um, uh, guidelines at the time. Mm -hmm. If camp opens tomorrow, um, no, uh, or, or the, the entry would be staggered and, and, you know, we'd be pretty careful about you know, how many are in, in at once and stuff like that. But, you know, things are gonna change a lot between now and, uh, and July, uh, July. So um, it's possible that by then we'll be in a situation where, you know, we can welcome you in and you can, as has been traditional in past years, you know, you can set your, your, your child's room up for them. Um, I just can't guarantee at this moment that that would be the case. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roussel. Okay, and then we're gonna hear from Alex's dad. Jeremy, did you have a question? I did, uh, two questions actually. One, and maybe you sort of hinted at this, it may be COVID dependent, but the, the child's things, their clothing, everything else that they're gonna bring for the summer, you know, as a residential camper, does a counselor like unpack them and have their stuff waiting for when they get there on camp arrival day? Or is that something that's coming upon the child? So Carl, I can help with that if you'd like. Um, sure. Usually, traditionally in the past, um, pre-COVID, the campers would come um, with their parents. The parents would help get them set up, unpack for them. Um, but unfortunately, now with COVID, um, there's a lot of rules in place. Um, right now at Marvelwood, um, when we do get new students, um, if you would like to uh, go into the dorms, you would both have to bring in a PCR test showing that you're negative. Everyone has to wear masks and then you can go in. We really don't know just yet what the summer is going to bring and what Connecticut state laws are going to implement regarding that. 
Um, so it's still up in the air. So we would like you to help your child go in and unpack and get them set up. And you can see the dorms and, you know, just not seeing it on a screen. You can actually, you know, um, help them unpack. But right now we just, we probably won't know honestly until probably May. And at that point it could change as well. So I would, I would plan for, as of right now, everyone coming, um, even our campers, we're going to have to have PCR testing, you know, showing negative. If you have a vaccine card, we'd like a copy of that as well. But I know a lot of them, you know, it's just not age appropriate yet for them. Um, so it's kind of up in the air, like I said, and we really won't have an answer to that until May. Can I, just, can I just say something? I want you to know, Jeremy, though, there are plenty of counselors that will be there to help your child. Even if, you know, if because of COVID restrictions, there's going to be counselors that live in the dorm with, with, with the kids and they'll make sure that all their rooms get set up, that everything is put away. So you can rest assured with that. Okay. There will be somebody there to help your child. Okay. Oh, make, makes total sense. And then the other question I had for, for the residential students, what are the weekends like? Um, so on weekends, we go on... You know, fun trips, sometimes they're in the more nearby area. There are uh, several uh, nature preserves and um, hiking areas. There's one very nearby called uh, Macedonia State Park, um, where there is extensive areas to hike. There are waterways to, 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 to look at. Uh, by waterways, I mean streams. We're not talking big rivers, but um, uh, although there is right next to the school, a pretty big river that goes right by us. Um, we have done, um, you know, uh, uh, trips to roller skating, um, trips to uh, amusement parks. Uh, we didn't, we didn't do a lot of amusement. We didn't do any amusement parks last year. We didn't do any ball games last year, but I expect this year we'll do amusement parks, ball games. There's some Lo local and uh, um, uh, minor league baseball teams in the area, and it's usually fun to to catch one of those games. Um, we do for younger kids. Last year we started doing a um, it's whitewater rafting, but it's on a lower intensity level, and it's actually right nearby. Um, and and then for the older kids, as Haley alluded to, at the end of, of the season, we do a big, intense whitewater rafting trip uh, up, up in um, Massachusetts, uh, which is a, a lot of fun. I, and I know campers from 30 years ago who still talk about that trip. Um, you know, Haley mentioned it in, in her, her uh, talk. Um, we go... Uh, to um, let's see, there are there are some some you know, mini golf. There's um, a fun little. Um, it's sort of a combination mini golf climbing adventure uh, where everything's neon and glows and um, and you can climb on it and and it's kind of fun. And then. Um, uh, so we do trips like that, maybe Alex or, or if, I could, if I could jump in yeah. real quick too. Um, so last year also we did, uh, we went to Catamount. We did, they, they have the, the country's longest zip line, uh, but also a ropes course for the younger kids. Um, we've also, so like some days, you know, we plan one thing and then it rains and, and, you know, we might have to adapt. There is, um, uh, not too far away, a bowling alley, uh, that the kids had a lot of fun with. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of things like that too. We, we do, we do try to think about too, to balance it because, um, uh, it can be really exhausting. They've got busy weeks, their weekends can be really busy with things. So we do try to have like one kind of big major thing and then something else where it's maybe a bit more of a, a, a relaxed hiking thing. Uh, last year in Dover, we took them to, uh, place called Stone Church, which is sort of like a reserve that has this really easy hike, but it's a, a really cool cave that they go to, um, you know, and then we'll, we'll eat in town. Um, and so, yeah, we, we do try to balance it. We try not to overdo it <laughs> um, because it is, it is a lot. So, um, but we, we do make sure we, we pack with a lot of fun things. That's good. Thanks for the information. Something... I'm sorry. No, I just said thank you for the information. 
We did revive something last year. For many years, we used to take the kids rock climbing in the Gunks, which is nearby in New Paltz. Um, incredibly valuable uh, experience. And uh, we'd stopped for a little while and we revived it last year and it was really um, a, a great experience. Okay. Thank you, Carl. We have one more hand up. Lacey, did you have a question? More than one. Hey, thanks. Yeah, I have a ton of questions. Um, okay. <laughs> so how do you assign um, the dorm rooms and, and roommates? I, I assume they have roommates. Yes. Um, in most cases, in, in, in nearly all cases, uh, the kids will have roommates. The only exception would be if, you know, if I have an odd number, uh, it's two to a room. So if I end up with an odd number in a group, someone might end up not having a roommate for a little while. Um, but we, you know, we look at the personalities uh, and, and put them together as best we can. Um, Usually we, we hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, in the, the rare case that, that something's not working, we can, we'll do a few things. We'll, first, we'll, we'll try to mediate. And, and, you know, part of the whole idea is we're teaching them how to uh, work with another um, person to share a space. Um, and then if, if necessary, we, we'll, we'll make a change, but we really, um, we try to avoid that. It's a short period of time. Uh, and we, we, you know, again, we'd really rather um, teach them how to share that space and, and, and you know, be equitable. Um, but, you know, from time to time, you know, either need to change or, uh, as I said, if there's an odd number of, of folks in a group, um, you know, we, we, they might have to, to be on their own. Okay. Um at, at night, can they have a white noise machine at all? Or because they're sharing a room, they, I assume they can't, but I still um, I'm not opposed to it. I, you know, we have to make sure that it's not going to be distracting to the other uh, person in the room. Uh, because if it's, you know, it may be serving uh, one person, but not the other. Okay. Um, and night, okay. Light, night, night lights are certainly fine. Can I just say um, one thing that um, in the during the application process, the next part of your application process, you'll be asked questions about your preferences, and that there's a good spot for you to write. Would like to bring a white noise machine. Um, I do encourage um, if you wanted to bring a fan, that's also like a, a white noise too, and that would serve dual purpose. Mm -hmm. um, okay, great. Um, what about um, melatonin gummies? It, is that something that could be administered or like the dorm mom would do or the, the kid could just do? I don't know how that fits in with medication. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, so all medications do go through the health office. I do ask though um, that you don't send gummies only because they melt in the summertime because we can't dispense it from the bottle itself. We have to like put it in an envelope. Um, and, and a lot of times by the time I hand it off to the dorm parent, it's sticking in the package and then they're just not really getting like the adequate dose. I know they make chewable ones. Um, I have had those sent in and those don't seem to, uh, disintegrate or anything, but gummies are just, they just get so sticky and, and nasty. Um, but if there is any kind of medication, you'll see it in the health packet, um, all medications, even if it's over the counter, it has to get signed off by a doctor so that we can administer it to them. And you, you'll see it in, in the health packet portion. Okay, all right, great. Thank you. Um, and that goes for, for vitamins. Um, anything, <laughs> aspirin, anything. Yeah. Tylenol, anything. The only thing that students are allowed to carry on them themselves um, is a, an, a, ah. an inhaler. And, but that still has to be signed off by, by a doctor. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, can you still see me? I'm my computer yeah. froze. Yeah. Okay. No, I can, we can see you and hear you. Okay, great. Um, can, my daughter wants to know, can they have gum? As long as it doesn't end up on the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> okay. Yes. She's very responsible. She, she uses it to concentrate. Um, um, uh, from a health perspective, you know, what other conditions are you, are you familiar with? You know, anxiety, ADD, um, sensory processing disorder, auditory processing disorder. So have you, have you had sort of that gamut um, there before? 
Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> All of it. Yes. All right. Uh, um, but just but you, what you should know is we don't have on site like a, a psychological counselor to to work with with students in that way. But we are familiar with those issues. Some of them are uh, you know part of the whole profile that goes along uh, with our kids. Um, how often can the kids call home? Once a week. So first of all, the first week, uh, we will not have them call home because it tends to exacerbate homesickness. Um, and this is a phenomenon that's talked about by uh, child psychologists all over, you know, who, who, who talk about camp experiences. Um, so we won't have them call the first week, but the, starting the second week, they will call, they'll have a, 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 a night designated uh, for them to call. Uh, and it usually will take place somewhere between seven and eight o'clock at night. You give or take a little bit on each end of that, but, but that's generally the time frame. Okay. Um, can you connect a student with a tutor who can continue throughout the school year if that's something the family's interested in? It is possible. We do have, as, uh, as um, we learned uh, already, um, the, Dylan, who uh, may or may not still be on here, uh, is uh, receiving tutoring from uh, uh, his tutor from the summer. Um, I, I could speak to that, Carl. We, if we know in the beginning, that's the most helpful that you want to do that because then we can, um, through Kildonan Teacher Training Institute, we can hook you up with a tutor who uh, potentially has availability to continue for remote. It's high, it's on, you know, it was very fortunate that we were able to do that with in person, <laughs> um, but you never know, the stars may align, but just, it's great that it's in your head right at the beginning, you can give us the heads up and we can, Sherry and I can um, put our heads together when we're making the tutor match. Okay, yeah, great. Hey, I didn't know if that was sort of like a one-time phenomenon that just sort of happened or if that's something you, you could facilitate. Um, do you provide like a like a packing list at all? And, and I'm thinking about sort of like the horseback riding and stuff like that. We have riding gear and boots. Should she bring that stuff? Should yeah, absolutely, we, we provide a, a packing list um, and, and you can follow it accordingly. Um, the, we, we like our um, participants that are, are, are joining horseback riding to use their own helmet um, and it must be, um, NTISA certified. Um, you'll get all the information on the packing list. Okay, great. What about, um, this is my final question, I promise, um, okay. spending money. Okay, <laughs> at camp, everything is inclusive. It's all included. Okay, the only thing a boarding camper uh, as a family that you'll have to pay for is laundry service. Every camper does, um, at, boarding camper subscribes to the laundry service. So that's the only thing. Everything else, if we go to an amusement park, if we go anywhere, um, it, everything's paid for, all the activities. Actually, so that brought up another question. Can you can you talk a little bit about the laundry service and sort of how does that work? Is it a okay, week's so Like, like I said, all the campers uh, do the laundry, laundry service. And the reason that we do that is because we don't have time to do laundry. <laughs> We're too busy getting the laundry, making the laundry. And um, so I'm not sure about the cost, but um, it's, it's somewhere around the $200 range, Carl. Yeah, a little, a little under 200. Okay, and um, each of the campers get their own laundry bag and it has their name and big bold letters on it. The, the dorm parents um, make sure that the campers bring their laundry bag to the hallway. Um, when the laundry service picks it up, the campers are usually not there. They come, they pick it up, they return it clean, folded and back in the same laundry bag, um, which is also washed. Um, and if I may skip to uh, another question from Dylan and Jordan's mom, Kimberly. So um, I will try to be quick. One, no, I, no, saw, I, I saw in the, the schedule, um, something's very different. You know, as you know, we, we've, we've done another camp um, in the past and uh, 
um, the, the schedule has parent visits, I think a couple of times. Yeah. Did you do that last year during COVID? Do you think that that would happen this year? Actually, you'll, you'll be very familiar with our, our uh, plan this year because it's the same as uh, Susie did. Uh, okay. Uh, so we'll have a day of, uh, uh, in the middle of a, a parent's day. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll come in, um, you can spend the day. We'll have some programming. Um, yeah. You'll also have some time to spend with your child, uh, but it won't be like a whole weekend. No, no, but something. Um, she actually hasn't done that during COVID, but, uh, and so, but, but it, it is something that is very different and, and appealing for us, um, for, for my kids. They, they need a, they need to check in a little bit. Um, and, uh, and my, my other question and, and you, you answered this, but I was transitioning because my daughter has tutoring now. Um, and so I probably, I missed the, the answer, but in the chat is how does the additional tutoring like math work into the day? So I, I'm interested in that, but I don't, not at the expense of them missing something really fun because then it's, then it's too much. Right. So I, I want to understand what that balance looks like. I can take that. Um, so the math Thank tutoring you. is uh, is an additional one that that we have in there. So mm-hmm. it basically would just go into uh, one of the activity slots. Um, we do offer a half period and full period. Um, you know, typically we do try to uh, suggest the full period because I think you're going to, you know, especially if they want to make gains, you know, having that extra time um, is really helpful. Um, but if they do a half period, you know, they, it, depending on which I try to match it with an activity that, you know, there's some activities you really just can't miss half of, you know, but there are some where it's not that big of a deal. If, you know, with archery, if, if um, you're taken halfway through that, um, then, you know, it's, it's, you're not really missing a whole lot. Um, and, and so, yeah. You so know, it I is think- at the expense of an activity. That was, that was really my question because yes. I, I do want them to have a good balance of academics and fun. And uh, otherwise, at least my son will not be happy. <laughs> So instead of, instead of four activities, um, if he did math, he would have three activities. And is the math tutoring every day? Is yeah. that program every day? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Monday through Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, okay. I, another hand raised we have from Lila. Lila, can you unmute your screen? How are you, Lila? Hi, Lila. Um, I'm good. Um, will we be riding the same horses in the horseback riding we did last year? I can take that. Well, let's just hope we have the same horses. Um, we're, we're hoping to go back to Kent school. So um, they should still have the same horses. Which one was your favorite, Lila? Jack. Oh yeah, I bet you he's still there too. Okay, um, we still have some more questions here from um, Allison. Um, and she would like uh, you to go over the online camp experience, Sean. Yeah. So, um, so with the online, we we do try to uh, you know really what what happened is when um, COVID was re- uh, originally hit, you know we we didn't have an option of having an in person uh, experience. So we so we created an online camp um, that included tutoring and activities and um, some social gatherings and things like that. Um, for this year, um, it's. You know, the majority of people would be in person. There, there is some uh, online, and we are looking to expand that. But you would definitely have your tutoring. Um, we'd have available, so you know, math tutoring and, and assistive technology, that kind of stuff, uh, could be additional add-ons. Um, and then we also have a couple activities that you know, obviously, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do sports along with the, the other campers. Uh, but we do have somebody who um, does our like computer science programming uh, that works online anyway, um, and so she does uh, building virtual worlds, where uh, actually takes place within this sort of a virtual platform um, that uh, we actually had used. Um, you know, for our virtual camp. Um, also 3D modeling using Blender. So they could do, they could learn how to create 3D models uh, using that program. Um, and then also an introduction to coding class. Um, so they could, uh, you know, most of that one is sort of like building websites. So HTML and CSS. Um, and there may be uh, some, depending on uh, the activity leaders and things like that, that we may add on to that. But as of right now, those are the activities that, that work, um, you know, mostly with that. Um, 
And then we have other other virtual things like, uh, you know, parent coffees and things like that, where, you know, we do want to be able to make sure that we're checking in, uh, that you do feel like you're part of the camp um, and, and um, you know, that experience. Great. Thank you, Sean. Uh, we have, I think, a couple more questions here. Is there fishing available? Yes. Wants to talk about fishing? Does <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris? Hi, Chris. Chris? Uh, well, I know Chris took them out uh, a bit last year, um, I think. So we have uh, a couple ponds. Uh, so right, as you see in Lake Dorm, there's a pond right behind that. Um, there's also just right up the road, there's another pond um, that's uh, sort of- I'm gonna uh, clean my bathroom, okay? That's sort of behind uh, where we keep our, our canoes and things like that. Yeah, so we do, do have, that we do have Fridays um, where where we have kind of like barbecues by the pond. And so we'll have a little bonfire, we'll have some music, we'll have some yard games, uh, we'll have a couple poles available. Um, and even sometimes, uh, you know, other days too, you know, for an evening activity, if there's a couple kids that are really interested in fishing, uh, you know, we'll have somebody who, who will take them down to the pond and, and uh, cast, the, cast the line out. Okay, um, and we have a, another question about wearing masks, Jen. You want to take that one? Are kids required to wear masks? Um, as of right now, yes. I mean, like I said before, it, it may change. We just don't know yet. But as of right now, everyone is required to wear a mask indoors. So what about what in their dorm rooms, Jen? If, if, if they are in their dorm rooms with their roommate, they don't need a mask. Okay. But Right. Outside of that, don't, right. don't, don't. But if they're in the common room with all the other campers, yes. If they're in their classrooms, um, obviously not when they're eating lunch or breakfast or dinner, they don't have to. But any okay. any indoor time, they must be masked. And we do have in our cafeteria an outdoor seating area too. So, you know, mm -hmm. we do generally encourage, you know, over the summer, it's, you know, beautiful days out, you know, try to get outside as much as possible um, as well. And, you know, we're, we're outside a lot for different activities anyway. So, um, you know, we try to limit how much time they, they have to be doing that by just going outside. And there's also, you know, each, each period, you know, they will have to walk, you know, from one building or one activity to the next. So they're only wearing it for a limited amount of time, like with their tutor, they'd be wearing it. Or if, if they're, you know, inside, you know, say doing ceramics or something, but if they're outside, they don't necessarily have to, if they're walking around campus. Okay. Thank you. Um, getting back to online, um, what is the daily required time for students to be online? So um, I can take that again. Uh, so really with the online, it's it's built a bit differently where it's, you know, the tutoring is the core and then you can add on activities, um, you know, as opposed to being in person where, you know, it, we've got all these other activities that sort of come with it. So the, the minimum required time is that you have that one hour of tutoring. And so that hour block is going to align with the same periods that we have uh, in person. Um, so you would have that one hour. And then if any, any additional activity that you add on is that's going to be another hour of, of of, um, activity or tutoring. Okay, and um, another question from Tiffany. Um, at what age do you find the campers get the best experience, younger or older? I don't know, Gail, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> She's still enjoying yeah, it. <laughs> you know what? I enjoy camp just as much as the kids do. So, you know, I, it's, it's all ages because they all get this, they all get the same experience. They all have friends, their own age. They're all dyslexic. So they're, they're, they're there's that camaraderie that they're all getting together. You know, when we're in the dorm at night, we're, we're all sitting around, whether it's the middlers, the juniors and the seniors, you know, we may have a movie night where we're all sitting around, but we're all sitting there playing games and we're all interacting with each other. So it really is for all ages, including myself. And, and I'd like to add on something too, is I think what's a really important part of our culture here um, is it's something that I think uh, that I got, we've, we've gotten a lot from, we, we used to work with a program called Eye to Eye, which is a, a mentor uh, program where we would have students from Kildonan uh, go to other schools and work with students with dyslexia who are younger and do art projects and things like that. And so I think that the, the idea of mentorship is extremely important. And so, uh, you know, 
part of our culture is, is really initially really setting that standard of that, you know, the older kids, you know, your mentors to these younger kids, they look up to you and everything you do really makes a big difference in, in what they see and how they act. Um, and so, you know, I think that bond that when you've got those older kids looking out for the younger kids, you know, it's, it's really something special where they're, they're really, you know, you see uh, some of the juniors and the seniors just like hanging out and playing together. And, um, you know, they, they do have to hang out with their own age group as well, but that intermingling and the fact that they're looking out for each other and that we are really one big family is, is something that's, that's really great that we do as well. Okay. Um, and here's a question about technology, iPhones, iPads, video games. Um, uh, Lindsay wants to make sure that this is something that kids do not sneak in. Um, and um, I can tell you uh, that according to our rules, uh, given that we don't allow any technology um, to be held by the camper. Um, we do use technology, but it's not to be held by the camper. Um, uh, if they were allowed to have iPhones or iPads, they wouldn't be present in any of their activities. They'd be on their, their device. So um, we're really um, strict about it. Um, and it's a, an offense um, t t that will get a call to home saying that we found it. <laughs> right, Carl? That's correct. And we will take it and, and either send it home or hold it until the end. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, we're not trying to spoil any fun, but it actually we're creating more fun because it gets them you know, out involved in the program and connecting with other kids. Okay, and um, Julia, um, Lila would really like to say hello to you. <laughs> Hi, Lila. There you go. Okay, uh, here's another question from Tiffany. Do the campers need to attend all six weeks or is there an option to attend for a shorter period of time? So the answer to the question is six weeks. And um, I'll I mean, let- One of the biggest reasons- Okay, that, thank you. Kevin. Yeah, we just, it's a, it's a, shorter than that, it's just not a meaningful intervention time in terms of making real growth in the, reading and writing skills. So we, we need those six weeks to, um, to, de to deliver the, the, the growth that you're hoping for um, in conjunction with all the fun. So it, that's why it, I know it's, it's a chunk of time and it's a challenge with planning, with family planning. Um, so we, we do hear that request, but we do stick with our six weeks because that's what we need to do our job. Okay, Kimberly, I see your hand is up. Did you have another question? I have, I have one more. Um, so I have twins, so hopefully we'll be attending. Right. <laughs> um, their birthday is July 20th. So can you share how you recognize birthdays? We love birthdays, right, Gail? <laughs> we make a big deal oh, about do. birthdays. Um, we can arrange, and there's a number of things we can do, uh, but what we always do is on the day, um, sometimes even a couple times a day, we will, the whole camp sings to the birthday person. Um, we do have a tradition of having folks stand up on a chair while we sing to them. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We've had folks um, order cupcakes or some special dessert. Uh, in my family, it wasn't really a birthday unless you had a big Carvel cake. So. I, and there's a Carvel store just one awesome. time away. So I have, I have brought in Carvel cake for, for uh, birthday folks. Okay. Um, but we can also arrange, um, you know, something. Uh, I know that some people like to celebrate a little more quietly. Um, and so we've arranged, uh, you know, different things in the dorm that are a little less uh, uh, public, but but really, we really like to make a big deal of birthdays awesome. because we Great. think they're special. You. Milana, do you have another question? Yes, thank you. Um, so as someone mentioned, like secondary issues, like ADHD. Oh, I think How we you? lost you. You got muted. Sorry, um, uh, someone mentioned some secondary issues. I just want to better understand, you know, how do you make sure that the kids are the right fit and that uh, that it's the right social environment for, for the kids. Is your 
focus primarily being dyslexia with maybe some other things that go with that, like, um, you know, organizational skills that often or executive functioning, but the primary is dyslexia, or do you also accept, you know, kids with other issues like nonverbal or, um, you know, other challenges? Generally, the primary diagnosis is dyslexia, uh, language-based learning disability. Um, we don't tend to ha have kids with nonverbal learning disabilities. Uh, we're not necessarily equipped to, to work with, with the, those um, issues. Uh, I think either Kathleen or Sherry could speak more in depth to that. I would just reassure you that we, we very carefully review all the testing that you share with us. Um, and so sometimes it's really complex, which is the, the foremost issue. So we, you know, we will review it carefully, confer with you. There are other, there are comorbid um, conditions that have make no effect, right? ADHD, we can handle because we can just plan that lesson accordingly and switch up that activity. That's just, that's kind of easy for us. <laughs> um, but in, in terms of the other issues, we would review it very carefully. Um, and, and make a determination with you. Uh, Carl and I review it. So it, it really depends that um, sometimes the child and the paper aren't exactly, the report aren't exactly matched. So uh, we don't just read the paper and say, oh no, we, we cannot help this child. Um, and we're, you know, we're living in a time too where COVID has really, um, you know, it's done a number on everybody. So, you know, there's a lot of learning that needs to be recouped. So that's something that th this camp can help with in this moment as well. So, um, but to call- That's very point, politically correct answer, but I think what we're really getting at, like Alex's primary issues, dyslexia and dysgraphia, and he's extremely verbal and, and you know, and, and he's working on his own issues, like, um, you know, everybody is. But like, I, I guess my question is, would he, socially given that it's a small camp are all you know are are you choosing the campers to be primarily in that kind of group um or is there going to be like you know half of the kids have other primary issues like autism or other issues i just want to oh. you know, understand oh. how you select your campers yeah no i mean and carl can it's a it's a camp for dyslexics so it's okay. that's yeah. that's the identity and that's part of why it works, um, to, which many of, of my colleagues have, have attested to, that, you know, you're kind of finding your people. So yeah, no, it's- Okay, thank you. And, and our, our program wouldn't necessarily work for um, a different population that would, wouldn't be able to benefit from our program. So we, like Kathleen said, we, we, we go over the applications uh, and the testing and, um, we only accept students that we feel that we can help. Makes sense. Thank you. Okay, I think I have one more question from Melissa here. Mm -hmm. um, would, what would the online tutoring schedule look like? Would the hour of tutoring be in the morning? Yep, so um, I could take that. Um, so the, the online, th there is some flexibility there. Um, we can't necessarily guarantee. So just like um, someone tutoring at the camp, um, we'll try to uh, work in, but you know, depending on the tutor schedule, uh, they may only have certain periods open. Um, but you know, I think if that, that is something where you're really trying to get it done in the morning, you know, let me know ahead of time and I'll do the best I can. I can't, like I said, I can't necessarily guarantee it, but um, generally speaking, we, we, you know, we, we usually uh, make the schedule work pretty well and uh, try to make everyone as happy as possible. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some flexibility. Like I said, the tutoring tends to match the same schedule as the, the in-camp. Um, so, you know, if there is a time slot or at least a couple time slots would be even better uh, that you're looking for, then, then we can usually uh, make it work. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Um, do we have any more questions? No? Okay, well, um, I'd like to thank you all for, for joining us. Um, also like to thank our camper families uh, and our Dunnebeck staff for giving us such keen insight into our camp program. Um, I'd like to thank the Marvelwood School for giving us our new home. 
And, uh, and we look forward to celebrating our 67th year at Camp Dunnebeck with your camper. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you at camp. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Hi, my name is Tristan Misha. I've been here for three years now. Um, the camp's not only a camp for reading and writing, it also has a lot of other cool things like uh, sports activities, music, mountain biking, horseback riding. And in that, I've learned how to like get better at playing the guitar and playing the piano and bass. Hi, my name is Max, and at Camp Donnebeck, I learned to be a better speller to be better at archery, and to be better at video. Um, Hi, my name is Haven, and I didn't know I was good at mountain biking until I came here. Hi, my name is Peyton. Um, I got better on mountain biking, and I want to get better on technical riding. So I wanted to get better at horseback riding, so I chose that as an activity for me to do at, here at camp. And um, I cantered for the first time, which is like faster than walking and trotting and it was really fun. Hi, my name's Declan, and I learned how to write cursive. Hi, my name is Jade, and at Camp Dunnebeck, I learned to be more confident in asking for help when I need it. I wanted to come to camp because I wanted to learn how to read more fluently and read, like, become a better overall reader. And all my, like, tutors in the past years, they, like, helped me with that by, like, teaching me how to do script and like decode sentences and like pick apart sentences and paragraphs. Hi, my name is Sergey Kelly and uh, at this camp I learned many things, not just writing and reading, but um, getting good at sports and learning the piano. Uh, I do succeed in English and reading, but this camp has made me improve in many things and I enjoy doing it.